to move the light. Get it. I'm just going to press go live here too. So, okay, Johnny, thank you for being with us. I really, you're such a mentor to me. I've known about you for a while, way before uh, the internet. So, I love you. Wow. Wow. So, thank you. I'm honored. I, yeah. I, I was really, I'm on. I, I don't know. I just, since the first time I saw you on Eva's interview, I've just loved you like. Like I've known you forever, so. I, I think we do, same here. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? We gotta talk, and Emma, you too, you know, you're bringing yeah. us, you're stupid, you connect it all, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. I met Eva, and, um, and the same time I met Alexandra, and mm. it's been two years, oh, and, and I just love, love you to pieces, Eva, too, so. <laughs> love you too. Well, with that say, I would like to say welcome to Heart to Heart with Eva and Magnificent Times with Suki Reese and Johnny Womack. Hello and welcome. Hello. So we went live before we did the introduction here, but we have some exciting topic and I'm just going to share that topic uh, with you all. And um, it's shielding and removal of infringement. Mm. Was that correct? Infringement. Sure, yes, Infringement. Yes. Yeah. Infringement. Yes. So, yay. This is a usual. And it's so in time. Mm. Shielding has always been in time, but somehow it's intensifying a lot right now. So, who, who wants to start? Who well, wants you, go, to you go, Suki. It's your show. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Our show. Um, Hello, thank you for having me, Eva. Uh, uh, shielding for me is so very important. I just made a little video on this. It was like three minutes long on how I shield. I um, presented that it's, we're living in density. We're living in polarity and we live in a dominion where there are lower astral dense beings that it's their job. It's their function to leech on to your astral body, invoke shitty energy. So you'll produce that crappy energy and feed off of it. And there's a way to completely mitigate all that. Um, and it's with shielding. And how I shield is twice a day. I shield when I wake and I shield as the sun's going down because those are the times that I find are most important for me and my being. And I would recommend that to other people too. Well, so that's quite that, interesting that you say that, that you are shielding twice a day. Is that something right. that you have been doing for a lot of time now or? Sure, yeah. And in all honesty, I've been doing that probably for about four years. Okay. okay. Where I'm shielding. So, and, and, and that's a great, it's a spiritual practice. It's spiritual hygiene is how I look at it. Okay. When, and I work with the archangels, the Elohim. So that's how I shield and we can go through mechanics of shielding, you know, cause there's, you can do it any way that you feel is appropriate and in alignment for you. Okay. Um, but no, twice a day, because well, right now, because, and I've said this before on other broadcasts, that the demons that have never been here are here now. Like all demons, demons are lower astral dense stuff is here right now, making a muck and seeing who's on their team and then who's on team light. Cause there is teams. Cause there, this is a battle. It's oh. a spiritual battle. And there's a belief in the, the spiritual community that you don't need to shield in that thought that you're lowering your vibration um, and it makes you more susceptible to things. I think that's a huge distraction that was you know thrown out into the community because it's a bunch of bullocks and um, shielding is night and day difference. So, mm -hmm. and it's not that I, entities, I will refer them to as entities, it's not that they can't latch on to me, it's way harder. So if everything is frequency, vibration and resonance in, in our universe, then mm -hmm. 
the job of shielding is to resonate higher than these beings so that they can't get a hold of you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. it. Setting boundaries towards Clear the spiritual down. communities. Yeah. Do you shield? How many times a day do you shield? I I shield at least twice a day, and whenever I I'm a um, very empathic. And, and whenever I feel it, uh, I've learned to listen to my higher self. And when some it comes into my mind, then I know to do it. So I do know that light workers are a particular target right now. And, um, and, and people that are unaware of that realm, they're really, uh, they're, they're really, at, you know, I don't want to say at risk, but they're more vulnerable because because light workers, they're, the unseen realms, like Suki says, are out to, they know they don't have much time and they're out to get as, they're starving actually because the light has risen so much on earth and they're, you know, what it's like when people are on a deserted island and they have no food or <laughs> they're that's gonna, a really good analogy john well yeah that's there's analogy. well yeah. it's not me i mean i've i've read it too many times that they're starving and i mean i do i am the cosmic detective and i and i and so what i do all the time is, is i'm led spirit leads me to this and that and that and that and it's all synchronistically and so I stay, uh, it's my job to be just like um, Sherlock Holmes on a case. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you take everything you've learned all over the years and you figure things out and that's what I do. And so I was so excited when you wanted to join me to join you on this. It's like you knew, mm -hmm. you didn't know, but you, you knew on some level because this has been my mission since I was awakened in the 80s is is uh, I, I, I've been on this, it's, it's been an amazing journey. That's all I got to say. Mm. You know, jo Johnny, um, uh, let, that's a good segue into the violet flame. Okay. Um, so, cause I knew, do know that you are a keeper of that as am I. And yes, um, thank you, St. Germain. I'm getting this flame. Yes, me too. This flame is accessible to any being that wants to use it. You cannot harm anybody with it for what it does is it transmutes discordance in the field within your field and, and the field, right? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is visualize it because your visualization is key to connecting to the universal field and making magic happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, all one has to do is visualize this purple violet flame coming up and around them, enveloping their field, <laughs> breathing it through all your cells, your molecules, your bones, your skin, all parts of your being. And, and when, when you're in discordance, you can do this to yourself. That's do this to self. And then you'll start to do it for other people. Now, if discordance doesn't want to be transmuted, it will get out of your field. So this flame protects you, directs you and connects you. And it, it and I knew that about you, Johnny. I knew that. So thank you for holding that. Thank flame. you. Yeah, I do use violet flame multiple times um, morning and night especially and then in between if I need and one thing I recently learned from um, uh, it's not directly to me from Yeshua Sananda but it's from him that when you transmute with a violet flame you need to place something in that void that's left so mm. what I've learned to do and I've just learned this recently is is to whatever is is transmuted i replace it with god's liquid love and light knowledge wisdom balance centralization and um i, I 
that's that's what I do to replace whatever's left after the violet flame, and to and to do the another thing to good to remember is to when you do transmute with a violet flame, if you do it with love, it mm. it is the just to remember like some people think of a flame as something you know volatile and ink but if you yes. think of the violet flame as love if you transmute things with love then it's it's more um that's what the violet flame is for mm -hmm. well it's you know it, and i'm just gonna go there because you know the there's just such a spectrum and that's a footnote. If you don't understand some of the things that we're talking about now, you will. And all that data is inside you. For the ancient, ancient mystery teachings are available to all beings now on the planet in this ascension. So um, that flame with the unconditional love will ignite your adamantite particles, Mikhail tells me, mm -hmm. which is creation within us in our higher heart mm -hmm. i hope i said that right mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you use the violet flame to turn into something else too because i use it when to clean spaces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i can send it to to work mm -hmm. because i do know that it will dissolve and um, it will dissolve with love and compassion, not mm -hmm. by my will, but from the divine will. So that makes it so much easier because whatever happening is guided by the yeah. divine hand. So mm -hmm. that is a, I, I do love the violet flame and, and it has been very useful in a very loving uh, way many times throughout the years. So. I just want to, to say that because when we are talking about shielding and uh, and uh, protection, we do mm. need to clear spaces to where we are. And the violet flame is the, is so easy to use. You know, that's I, it's. I think that someone watching this is going, "Wow, that old abandoned building that feels really not okay." As I walk to work or whatever do it there, see what happens and feel it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's such tangible results. You get tangible results. So yeah, that's definitely a way to shield, you know, and the more that you do it, the more you can hold it. I mean, now I can drive the island and, and hold the flame, you know, which is magnificent. Yeah, because everything is practice. You need to have the the um, patience to, to be, present when you are doing it holding the in intention so yeah of mm -hmm. course um practice is good and um that's another segue into shielding where if you remain in your body and you are in this here and now you're not floating out somewhere else and that energetic kuleana responsibility is another way to shield because if you're situated in all your bodies those lower dense things it's very difficult for them to come and get into one of your bodies mm. so we, and when i notice yes yes yeah can i, can I just uh, say can we talk a bit about how to to actually work with the violet flame because uh, there's a lot of of um mantras on the internet that you can google up with, with the violent flames that are so beautiful but for those who have listened in when you're talking you you, you started to talk with uh, saint germain for example mm -hmm. so can you just give a um, a um, you know bring up who's saint germain and what's his connection to the violent flame and how to connect those two with each other because that is also gratitude to be able to work with the violent flame so yeah. do you want to Johnny, connect the dots? Would you like to talk well, about Saint Germain? Well, well, I learned about Saint Germain through the uh, I am discourses through um, the, the, the books by um, what's what's her name? Um, 
my mind went blank. Anyway, I read read all of the I am books and and supposedly he he's the uh, one that holds the 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 gifts for humanity of the Nasara, uh, you know, abundance. But I don't even think about that when I think about Saint Germain. Um, I just think of the I am that I am, and mm -hmm. and and the work that he did to help us realize that we're we're all um, connected through the I am presence. And so hmm. I, I hear Mikhail and it, the, the universal river of life, you know, the I am presence, the I am I. I've said that before, it's the most important verbiage we have. What I know of Saint Germain was that um, he was known as um, an alchemist, okay? Mm -hmm. and he lived a very long time and that couldn't be explained. Um, <laughs> but that's all I know of him. And I know that this flame had been established for humanity mm -hmm. to cleanse, clear, clean up, restore, reboot. Yeah. And um, just so well, very great. Yeah. yeah um, he did live a long time and um, a, a lot of the ascended masters, gosh, you know, I, I, I read the, all of those books in the eighties and, and I just don't recall all the details, but he was called the Comte Saint Germain, Saint Germain. Yes. Um, yes. He was Royal. Yes. Yes. Was, that's, yeah. That's and um, see, I'm trying to think um the books where i first learned about um oh there's okay there's a saint germain school so saint germain. i can actually give an example while you're looking through a book there how to use yeah. the violet flame if you want to yeah. um i he was, was an al alchemist yeah. he's an alchemist hmm. I was working a couple of years ago at a place where there were a lot of conflicts between people and I was quite exhausting. And mm -hmm. when the conflicts never die out, it just goes on and goes on. And we had a lot of people. Yeah, bless your heart. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Thank you, Saint yeah. and, and when we have a, a, a place, a workplace where there are a lot of conflicts that never die, die out and if it affects people so they are you know quitting their jobs and and uh, some actually left earth the earthly realms too so then it's something else connected to that place right that's the demons we were talking about or the lower densities uh, energies there's something there feeding off that conflict and fear-based reactions or and, and that that uh, nasty energies so well that was in the midst when I started to work with with a violet flame and I had been working with it for a couple of couple of time for a long time but um a place that the whole the whole workplace under the violet flame and I didn't set any intention because I don't want to be there sorting out where to go because that is not up to me and right. I use the phrase to um, to be the way it shall be with the intention of God's will so mm. and it got pretty ugly uh, it escalated but everything went for it was almost like you saw the matrix you know how the energy <laughs> lines you know you have to move through some some deep shit before it gets clear so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I i was in the middle of it but it worked out pretty well actually and uh, people started to feel better too um maybe they don't see it like that but the conflicts ended and uh, that's the purpose right and yeah. 
divine intention. I so love it. the violet well, flame, I have a huge respect for violet flame and I do know that it works. So it works. yeah, it works. so you can you can use it on both yourself and, and uh, to put put whatever you want to bring extra energy to to help you to clean and shield. Mm -hmm. but okay. i do need to step up i just didn't say it because i'm not shielding myself twice a day and sometimes i i don't think that i shield myself at all so maybe i should start to to uh, be a better person to myself and actually shield myself mm. um yeah well it's you know okay. it's not that you're being bad to yourself Eva. you just you know it's just more data that you can integrate well, yeah yeah and, and this is really good. And I don't want to sound weird, but I'm going to, it needs to be said. Density and discourse and that lives within us in our mental construct. And that goes back to the fall of man. If you, you want to get into that, it's, it's there for you. The path of mastery is to understand that you have two wolves and which one you're going to feed is going to win so we have a choice here in this free will universe and and you can choose the higher vibration you can choose that and it all start it, it, it all is an inside job mm. so it, so much are we like shielding from external things mm. where Yes, we're experiencing experiencing it in the materium, but it all comes from inside. So when we can address that voice that's not healthy, that looping that's not healthy, that's when you can address that inside, you won't experience that much craziness out here. Even... You know, what's going on in the world right now is a lot of unresolved fractals of, of us. Um, like they're just not, they don't understand what self is and that it's a system of one. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, so, and these are crazy days right now. The crazy, crazy, this is the days of revelations. Things are being revealed to us. It's real. This is really funny, Suki. Not funny, but it's amazing because everything that you've said today were things I thought this morning when I'm thinking about what what do I you know what's what do I need to focus on in this program? And you've spoken on every single point <laughs> point. And um, well, and just just so you know. Uh, I just pulled up something that St. Germain said. Um, he says, dream, dream, dream as big as you say, it will all be yours. You are the seed sowers of the new earth. You are the benevolent ones who wish to see love embrace all again and chaos and suffering end. Nothing is impossible for you are all alchemists. Use your minds wisely. <laughs> yes, because so, our mental body has so much to do with how we experience you know and it really feels good to wake up and sing and say how can i serve this place that's totally happening it can happen it's a choice you have yeah definitely a choice definitely so i'm just going to see here uh, we have some comments here. Um, oh. Yeah, beautiful to shield. Way to go, Suki. That's from uh, Jerry Rivera. <laughs> and, uh, Thanks. Yeah, and he also says, may Suki give an example? I'm not sure uh, in uh, what, maybe what was the Bible plane we were talking about. I don't know. It's, um, you know, the violet flame, it's super simple because all you have to do is visualize it to activate it. In fact, that's how you activate anything in the universal field is through your visualization mm. and intention. 
you know, there and 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 heart space, you know, when the and, and when those things line up, you can move a mountain. There's ones that come and have told us that before. Um so that's it. You just visualize it. And the more that you can visualize it and hold it in your visualization, that's how that's the mechanics of how to turn it on, turn it on. That that's that's one of the things I was thinking of this morning as is just saying something from my own experience about visualization. I do know that um, when I traveled uh, quite a ways from work uh, quite a few years ago, I was on these country roads and it was winter and for a long time I'd been shielding by visualizing the light coming down through my crown chakra, up through my sacral chakra, coming out in front of the car and making like, I call it my yellow submarine, like in the Beatles movie or the, yeah, the yellow submarine. So it would come out a little ways from my vehicle and surround me in a big yellow submarine bubble. And one day it was winter and I'd been doing this quite a, a long time, just like you say, repeating, visualizing. And I had visualized before, but this was one specific one I wanted to tell you about. Mm. And it was winter and I was heading to work on this icy, snowy road. And all of a sudden this big semi truck was coming towards me. And it was like in slow motion, I, I saw the guy's face and his eyes were closed and he was coming towards me. And in my mind, really fast, I was thinking, if I go off the road, there's a big ditch there and I'll probably roll. And right where my submarine was in front of the car, it's like he, his eyes woke up and he turned into his lane right where my submarine was. So I was going, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> this really works. And um, um and then, and then another time I was on that road and it wasn't in winter and I was talking to my friend on the phone who lived in another town and it was like a half hour drive home. So I was on, and all of a sudden in front of me, I don't know if you're in the country, if you're familiar with those great big wheels that water the fields, they're like mm. connected with pipes mm. and there's these giant wheels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, there was one wheel right in the road and the one end of the pipe was sticking right where it would have gone through my windshield. And I saw it right before my, my bubble was and I, uh, I avoided it. Um, I, I've, I know that there's been many other times that I've been saved by my yellow submarine, <laughs> so. Uh, one time my car went like this like you remember that harry potter movie when the bus gets really skinny that yeah happened. that's happened i've seen one time my son got caught on in between a partition under the house that wasn't coded he was able to crawl in and he was only like one at the time and i was up doing dishes above and i got to him and he was falling in between the space I don't know how he got in there. It doesn't even matter. And he couldn't stand up. So, and it was crushing him and I didn't have my phone with me. And I just screamed out to Mikael and all of a sudden the, the reality went and then he was, my son was right next to me. Oh. So, I mean, it, it's incredible, incredible things, you know? Yeah. I, I get, I like, Eva, I'm, I like to dance and sing and adorn myself so I I like a, a ritual with my shielding and I think Jerry was asking I know who that Jerry is hi Jerry um yeah uh I visualize like coming into my crown I'm asking the Elohim into my field I'm bringing that into my heart and you have uh, chakras in your hands that are connected to your heart chakra so then that light's coming out of my hands and I make a bubble and I infuse that bubble with my intention and my visualization. 
and that bubble can be color coded. It can be, there can be sacred geometry in it. There can be uh, sigils. I don't really use sigils, but if you do, then you know that's why I'm saying that. Um, and around me, around my beloveds, and it takes me, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe five to seven minutes. That's nothing with the the results that I have, you know. And it, you know, when you're shielded or, or if you use violet flame, people, because people are what is holding onto these lower dense things and it's through them that they're working. Those people will get away from you. They won't want to be in your field. So it's, it truly is night and day difference. Mm. Such an important topic, Eva. So thank you for, you know, bringing it to the the table and uh, is that when those people are moving away from you that uh, i was about to say open up but that is not what i mean but so what, what the higher you vibrate and the more you are working with the light you will also be a challenge for other entities from not this this realm and um, that brings me up to date of what is going on today in mm -hmm. almost a, like a global effect because the last pandemic is over. So the fear-based emotions and everything attached to that has almost died away. So no one is talking about the past year because that's, that's old news, it's fading away. So the starving you were talking about, Johnny, and the entities who feeds of, feed of these fear-based emotions, they are starving and they, the window that they can feed from is getting smaller and smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening right now is that, that there's a, a global issue that affects a lot of us, and that's mm -hmm. the economic structure the financial structure and mm -hmm. that is a fear-based history for everyone because this is our lives we are talking about and the the um, comfort of being alive that we have been used to so Scarcity. yeah yeah mm -hmm. so now we are facing a lot of fear of people who are afraid that their salary won't be enough to pay electrical electrical bills and to buy food and and how to navigate through this time and that is a something that i have noticed up here in europe because they they're literally shutting up the the gas tubes from from russia so we're not the, the electric electric bills are just <laughs> ridiculous high. You you need to laugh at this because the the funny thing is, if there was a solar event or or something happening on on a natural basis, mm. the fear will be righteous, so to speak, because then it's so out of control. But as as it is now, we are sitting here in in Europe. We have countries that have good economy so even though they are shutting down some supplies from one country there are still supplies within the other countries and as long as you have a country with good economic then you won't be afraid because they can't let their people be without electricity right so this is pure fear-based uh, control Absolutely. Yeah. And that, then the ascension, we move from that fear into the heart. We oh. move from our solar plexus into our heart, okay, of the fear into the knowing that we're going to be taken care of. You know, I, yes, it's it not, it, that's not a joke, and people are very serious. And I understand that myself just as every other human being on the planet. And it's time to be bold, people. Be bold and know that it's gonna be covered because it, it just will, it will get covered. If you're on team light right now, you're gonna get covered. If you're doing your best, 
you're gonna get covered. I just, I don't even. We, talk we like have that. all the hosts of heaven here right now. Not only, like Suki says, are the bad guys out in numbers, the the good guys are, and um. So, when I had my two week awakening back in the eighties, and I and I realized God was really uh whatever you want to call him, there really was a, a supreme source. And, and I started working with my angels. And then it, then it, you know, it's all progressed. But you, when you have that knowledge that you are always protected, you mm -hmm. are always, so it's natural to all of a sudden, if you hear something or something happens and you feel fear, Right now, what we're supposed to do is, yes, acknowledge it and then go into your heart, like Suki says, and and know that it's all taken care of. And so that's how we beat the beast. Yeah, so. Don't lose hope. No, hope is so amazing. And fear is something that we can all step into and ride like a big wave. And guess what? The next time that fear hits you, if you do that without being in the here and now, not letting anything distract you, like no substance or person, place, or thing, you're going to sit in your fear and write it out. The next time that fear comes, it's not going to be what it was before. It's going to be a lot easier. And then one day that fear will never show up again, you know, and that's inner work. And that's, and that's what's going on right now. I was telling a, a great friend of mine, there's no more time for suffering anymore. You're, no. You either know you're ascending and you're going to step into the golden age and you're preparing for that in vibration, frequency, and resonance, or you're not going to do that. That's kind of where things are right now. I don't think that many people can sit on the fence, you know, and if you really know in your heart that we are going into a golden age, then why wouldn't your, why wouldn't your family be heated? this winter you know it's an invitation for you to know that mm -hmm. and see how the universe really provides for you yeah i'm speaking to myself you always are speaking to yourself self is a system it's a mm -hmm. system of us mm -hmm. you know we're all here doing the same thing we're we're taking this place into a, a golden era mm -hmm. the new earth a thousand years of peace mm -hmm. it's happening it's happening definitely uh, and it's interesting because i do like to observe i'm one of those who observe what's going on with other people and how they react and, and uh, how the community is reacting and, and the country etc and i do know that now now is the time to keep that faith that you have in, inside of you and and to be there with your own faith and and uh, just letting it show in the community too. And I can give an example in my own family now, because we are also facing these ridiculous high electrical bills. And, and, and still, I can't help laughing at it because I think it's so, it's so stupid, <laughs> stupid actually. But I do know what it's doing to my husband because he is getting worried. He, he thinks this is creepy and he's trying, uh, starting to worry about how we are going to finance, you know, upcoming bills and et cetera. And, and I'm like, why, why are we even worrying about something that hasn't happened yet? So mm. just let it go. Of course, we can be aware of what and how we are using the electricity electricity of course but you know stop worrying let's take one day at a time you know just just be there and um i think that he's actually stepped into his own power a bit now and then taking it as it comes <laughs> but mm -hmm. i do know that it's affect affecting a lot of people and uh you actually need to address that um when you're when i'm talking to people that everything is going to be all right just as you said you well, i do the, believe that that that's their that's what they want okay what just happened in bangladesh right a couple of few few weeks ago when everyone went apeshit right 
That's what, that's what these forces want you to do. They want you to freak out. They want you to worry because they're harvesting that energy. They harvest it and they go and conquer mm -hmm. the world. And it's a choice, you know, yeah. this is, this is an opportunity for us to perhaps uh, think of alternative ways to heat our houses, getting mm -hmm. together, thinking outside the box. I, you know, perhaps you want to perhaps you can pick up and move your yourself to another part of the earth yeah. be bold because you're going to be supported i just know yeah. that so how things you for you in uh, in the states because we are, have this huge ocean between us so you're on the other side of the earth what are you facing the same fear-based community as we do here or how does the reality looks for you you mean in Hawaii or, or where I'm at? In this? Well, for, for me, it's almost at the same side of the globe. <laughs> you know, well, we've Hawaii, got Hawaii is exactly part of the States, it. but Hawaii would be, you know, I think you guys are pretty well taken care of on Hawaii, right? Well, yeah, thank you, Hawaii. Um, I'm a farmer. So a lot of people who live here, grow their own food we can we can grow food all year long if you're thinking about moving to hawaii please don't so many people have in the last three years go somewhere else um but no uh so yeah no with sure we're being you know they're dreaming us with electric bills um all that petro is out, out of control you know the funny thing is is like okay go buy an electric vehicle but how do we produce that electricity it's still coal most of the world so you know there's a there's definitely and no one really likes this word anymore but there is an agenda with these idiots and they're so foolish eva because it's we're going into the we're at the dawning of the age of aquarius which talks about and it's not it's like they're kids they want to get caught it's like they Cos cosmology says that it doesn't even support them <laughs> so yeah no it's back to what you asked eva we grow a lot of food here so i'm very grateful about that because it's that is the other part of it and uh, it's like we had this pandemic you know when people went on a spiritual quest and search and now we are moving into this other fear-based thing that the pandemic didn't work. So now they are trying another thing here. And, but we're also growing for this, for, from that, um, actually what's going on here. Because I do think that a lot of people now is starting to look over, you know, what do I have uh, in my own place? What can I trade with other people? You know, I, I have noticed that a lot of people have actually started to, you know, share what they have more of uh, mm. with other people. And, and there's these beautiful places where you can go now where I can clean out my closet, you know, with clothes. And I put it on, on you know, almost like a, a, in the open street. It's a, it's a small you know, opening house, I put my clothes there and I move on and some, someone else is moving by, picking out what they want and yeah. move. Yeah, and that, that is another way of exchange, exchanging energies with each other to trade. Donations. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to say something. Um, it, it, they want, it, it doesn't matter if you live in Hawaii or you live in Chicago, or you live in Moscow, or Johannesburg, okay? If you can find peace inside you, you'll find peace outside of yourself. So going inside is where it's at, and not reacting to things. Respond to them gently. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a consciousness game right now. They want you to flail around. They want your grief. Hmm. And you're right. It's because they're starving. There is no part of this world that the light has not hit. I, I don't want people to feel like we, 
because I had said we're in a battle and we are in a battle. But these people who are the bad actors on the planet, they own everything and they make the rules. Mm. So how could we win this battle, right? Yeah. The way we're winning this battle is because the light coming from our sun is coming from the galactic central sun mm. and it's activating our DNA. It's fusing our DNA back together and we are being restored to the original template that we, how we were yeah. created. Okay, that's what's happening in the Ascension. We have magnificent assistance from our galactic brethren and source itself. That's how we, that's how this happens. Because if we were just left to these worldly things, we're toast. But we're not toast because we are light and the light is coming here. And there's no part of the planet it hasn't affected. No. There's... I just want to clarify something. It, um, I doesn't mean that I don't mean that people are, are starving here because we're not there. Uh, no. Absolutely not. Not. Uh, it's just that I can see that this this event that is taking place is not uh, all bad. It's a bad thing, but there will come something good from it because people need to, last time it was a spiritual quest. Now it is how to use the spiritual quest in this now and how to change our, our, our way of living and behavior towards mm -hmm. each other. And um, that brings community into a place where it hasn't been for a long time. We are looking out for more than just ourselves right now. So I, I can see that there that is where we are going with this challenge that we are facing at this moment. Mm. Yeah, that's well um, said. Uh, just to see um, that, yeah, with the, with the collective, oh. you know, like how is this, the yeah. mechanics of the ascension, you're noting it, you're observing it. I, mm. I so Elizabeth Clare Prophet was the lady I was trying to think of her books were on St. Germain, if mm. anybody wants to know. Um, at my age, I kind of have some, <laughs> some recent memory things. Um, and then Rudolf Steiner was mm. real. He has a book, so many wonderful books, but one was on Archangel Michael. And um he wrote about these times, what's happening right now. It's a battle of our minds. Mm. It's, it's, it's a battle of our minds. It's, it's, um, he explains it a lot. It's too much for just this show right now, but just what, what's we've trying to get across to everyone is we are very supported by the, by the angelics we're very supported by the galactics mm -hmm. we have so much support and it's going there's no way that that god isn't going to win you guys so that's a simple way of putting it that's so true it you know i have a friend um she's like i'm scared to see the the ships i'm scared to see the ships and i said well the ships are always there they're always there. It depends on where your consciousness is in order to see them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're all here on planet earth as this collective, and we're all trying to raise our consciousness and our octave and trying to get it lighter, brighter, more uplifted to, so we're all on the same page to where we can all see the ships. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, it's so simple. Everything is frequency and vibration like Einstein said he 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 knew I call him oh, Uncle Tesla Albert said. because I love him so much but um when you realize that um and when you go into your heart that's the zero point so that allows you to stay in that frequency that you want to be in if you're in your mind <coughs> You're going to think about all the things that can go wrong. <coughs> and that's where they get you. So that's why you have to come into your heart. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's really important to keep reiterating is that <coughs> inside us. 
So everything we need is inside of us. Everything. So, so is the light. And that's what's going on right now. That's <coughs> the battle. Because this is just a reflection of what's in here. Hmm. And so how do you get the, oh, how should I say this? <coughs> is the infringement that are hitting us now? The uh, well, you know, I had said this with you before. Um, there's a so just in the last couple of years with what's happened on the planet, there's an inorganic, lower dense being that's gotten into this dimensional space and it's attached to that agenda. Um, who cares, you know, because love wins. And, um, but what was the question, Eva? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not trying to like do words. No, uh, I was thinking about um, how what's what's going on here is somehow orchestra in uh, from some direction, and that it will put a infringement within our consciousness somehow. So, how are we? Uh, Let's see how I should rephrase it. Well, I can save that question for a, a, a bit later here when <coughs> into my mind again, what I wanted to go with this. Um, yeah, I will come back to you with that question. I, I, that's, um, that's what mastery is, is understanding that within self mm. and, it, and making that choice to not resonate in that density. That's what, that is what mastery is. Hmm. Gotta you be know, cause, go there. And I, I, Cause we're always looking outside ourselves mm -hmm. for the evil when it's in you and you're the one that's resonating with it. So then in turn, you experience it. Hmm. But if I, let me rephrase this like, in, in this time and a global effect and a global scale, people mm -hmm. are confrontating both themselves and other people, which also open up to the possibility to be more challenged with other people's thought systems and, uh, and impulses that comes from the outside. So oh, well, sure. I mean, look at look at all the EMF that we have to deal with. That it, that is an infringement, you know. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry for your bad luck, humanity. But five G is toxic shit, you know. Look it up. It's it, it's you know. But those are the powers that be, and they that's what they've presented. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. Those work. They do work. They do. This is an EMF um, blocker. It's. It, it's this is heavy they put a little design on it but the the real thing is this this thing right here it's a and, coil yeah and they have uh and i have also emf blocker on my phone mm -hmm. this little thing you can stick them on your tablets your phones and it's mm -hmm. it's you can get like 10 stickers on um for really inexpensive on, on Amazon. Um, it's Japanese technology, but there are EMF blockers. In fact, oh, yeah. talking about protection, I have this little plug that I plug into the wall. It costs me $30 mm -hmm. and it t protects you from the EMF waves in your house. So mm -hmm. I've been, I've been, I think I was like, I knew about protection before I knew I needed to be protected. <laughs> And, and many people listening to this in the same area, you know, which is shungite, shungite. Yeah, and that's shungite. Very expensive, you know, all in your house, you can get crafty, your little pyramid, you know, just place it around and, you know, and the good news is that we're not going to have to deal with this. I mean, who knows what'll happen? Maybe one day we'll wake and we're going to be in that golden age or there will be some sort of event like Eva, you know, like some sun happening you know but we don't know but i do know this this is what i know and i'd like to share it with you beautiful people what i know is is that 
we will experience everyone watching this episode or this broadcast, whatever it is, this live, right? You're going to experience the golden age. You're going to experience a place where there is no more polarity. I know that. I know that in my heart. Thank you. I know that too. I just, <laughs> that's what you're not going to learn anything in this life. You're going to remember everything. You're not yeah. Learn remember it all you can remember yeah. who you are and where you're from and your multi-dimensionality because this place is just one one place you're in many places and spaces simultaneously yes yes yeah. <clears throat> and I, I i i i don't know if you guys have noticed and i mean i've known for a while the veils are really thin right now but just lately there's been instances brought to my attention from other sources of departed loved ones and 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 family and friends that have departed that are here uh watching they're i don't say watching us they're here to help us go through this it's it's something's happening something is up because just in the last few weeks um there's been three really am amazing things that's that's starting to present uh, to me that that my deceased sister has shown up, my deceased brother has shown up, and my fiance when I was in my 20s has shown up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that was killed be a month before we were going to get married, and, and that was in my 20s. And they all three, like, are here to show us that they're here mm -hmm. if you're just open and you're aware you're going to see all these miraculous things that are going to be happening um and just it's kind of like we're the big picture show and everyone surrounding us waiting <laughs> we're the ones that are that are uh in the star of our own movies let's put it that way mm -hmm. All eyes are focused on the blue pearl. <laughs> That's the, they refer to that in the, the cosmos as Earth is the blue pearl. Yes. Yeah. That and hope. Hope is so important, you know, just keeping yourself high. The more simple you live, it doesn't matter where you live, but just the more simple that you live, the more happier you'll be. I love the sim simplicity. I love, I love, I love that. It, it, it's, it's just amazing how that works. <laughs> so true. Like less is more. Let, less is more. It's so <laughs> much more. Yes, it is. I love yeah. it. The Japanese, bless you, Japanese people. You made a whole culture out of that yeah yes 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 the way you package things yeah super oh, yeah. so i just want to move back a bit to the topic here the remove <laughs> the removal of infringement do you want to okay yeah that? that's really good mm -hmm. that's where i'm going to plug myself i have a service for that and hopefully you can uh, type in my data there um, somewhere removal of infringement I you know anyone anyone can do that in my service I'll show you how and we connect with higher self and with the aid of the Elohim go in and remove the infringement and how does one do that now um, Johnny you start with that well, well <clears throat> I like I do I do my clearing with the uh with with the violet flame I I I don't think I have any you know for myself have infringement um that I know of I mean maybe I did years and years ago mm -hmm. so <clears throat> Um, I do know that there are people that get infringed upon, and uh, Eva and I were talking about this subject before we started live, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's a very concerning thing for some people 
that don't know that that realm exists. And that's why you have to become educated. First of all, that, that the, the unseen world is more real than the seen world. <laughs> and this is the dream. This is the dream. So you can't, you can't uh, protect yourself from something you don't know is there. But um, like when I was working for, uh, as in, for Idaho Home Health, managing that office, I told Eva, someone called in and wanted us to <clears throat> remove a spirit from their home. And that would be, they were being infringed upon. And uh, I said, well, the nurse I worked with said, no, we can't go do that because we're not that kind of home health. <laughs> <laughs> but he thought he was Hispanic and he thought we were there. Home health means I, my home is not healthy and I need someone to help me. So That's he awesome. recognized that there was something there that shouldn't be there and he needed help with it. Unfortunately, I would have gone out and uh, attempted it. Um, I have not had to do that my for myself but i know that there are so many people that are being infringed upon because they don't know what's going on they don't and then they get into fear and then they get fed off from the yeah because it's just the cycle yeah it's a, yeah okay so eva this is such an important question but However, it's very important to understand your higher self in order to remove infringement. And so that if you're there understanding higher self, then you can remove infringement with aid of higher self, go in, remove this, but I would say even though the even though the education's inside you and you don't need to go to anyone, if you're gonna sit with self, you will you will learn. Okay. There's but there are people that provide services like myself that are going to bring in you know, my repertoire, which is I work with the Elohim and they have the the, they hold the office, the authority, and the agency to remove such infringement. So does your higher self, but you have to be very connected with higher self in order to do that. And so what do I do? Okay. I find if I'm being uh, infringed on, most infringement will happen at the base of the skull or the base of your back like above your buttocks yeah like your weird you the bottom of your spine basically okay and a, a good way to to like observe that it, it will sometimes like you feel like you're spaced out and you're having a lot of really negative thoughts and things might seem kind of like not in focus i'm just talking about my own experience okay what i can remember and the reason why i got into this work was because i was so heavenly infringed upon and that was my story but anyway i connect with higher self and the elohim to that entity wherever it, it is in my astral body so this is in like a meditation or some type of ritual or ceremony for myself and i will ask that entity consciousness there's hooks implants portals all sorts of different types of infringement. But if it's something that carries a consciousness, I'll ask it, how did you come? How did you get to me? How did you get in? How did you get in here? You know, like, how did you connect? And it will tell me, hey, you were um, you were drinking gin the other night, and I was able to hop in, and here I am. And I will ask. Mikael to remove that and it depends I, I'll ask the entity do you have anything to say do you you know before I'm going to remove you and it'll tell me and then Mikael will take it to the either the next dimensional space or recycle it to source energy 
what I find in my work is that 99.9% of the entities that I encounter want to go. They're so very sick of having to produce their frequency in order to get your low frequency in order to go pay these suckers that have signed up, made the whole, you know, system. So it, one can do that, Eva, and it, but it takes a lot of discipline and internal work. I would suggest, because that's what I do, is to find someone who provides that type of service. If, and if money's not happening for you, that I'm welcome to trades. You don't have to have money to do that, or you, know, you can trade your service with mine. Um, but it can be done. And why I say higher self is, you know, Mikhail tells me that angels kneel and bow before a fully actualized human. That when you understand what you are and where you're from, nothing is impossible. So to remove such infringement is very doable, very feasible, takes intention and aid. Call in your celestial helpers, call in, deity the angelics you want to work with angels this is a perfect way to do it because they want to work with you all you have to do is ask mm -hmm. yeah. that's it so i know that that was kind of more of a lengthy thing but a really sure fire way to do it is to raise that violet flame of saint germain and stand in it because whatever is attached to you cannot resonate in that flame Okay, so if you feel, I, I feel that I'm infringed. If you can bring up the flame, visualize it, and let it move throughout all your bodies and envelop you, those things that are attached to you will let go for that moment. Ask Archangel Metatron to come in there and seal up that space. Thanks for is bringing there, Is up. there any possibilities to, because as, as I see, it, like, you know, it's so much easier to get help from from, I'm using you to remove uh, infringement uh, because somehow you're in sort of denial when you're working with yourself. You you're not always objective and and right. observing. So mm -hmm. things that has been within your energe energetic field for a very very long time somehow feels very uh, comforting from comforting to to still have there. So you're somehow ignoring that they shouldn't be there that's so, what it does that's that's exactly yeah. the frequency that it's doing such a good point and listen i uh it's um we're getting in an hour 15 and i have a session in 15 minutes so oh, I'm gonna have oh yeah time. but listen that's so important that you said that eva because the way the mechanics of how it's messing with us is to throw out the distraction, the frequency that, look, the devil's biggest job is to make you believe that it doesn't exist, okay? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what it's doing. That's, that's what the it's battle, doing. That's the battle of our minds. And I just want to reinforce this, Eva, for the people that don't believe that something works, mm. if you don't believe your prayer works or if you don't believe the violet flame works, the more you do it, the more you'll believe it and you strengthen it. So even if you don't believe it, your intent is so important. If you intend for it, it just keep doing it. Keep absolutely whatever you have to do, just just do it, even if you don't believe it. Because a lot of people think you have to believe to see, but I believe you, you see because you believe, you know, um, you have to first believe and then you'll see it. You don't see it and then believe it. You believe it and then you see it. That's faith <laughs> application, John. And that's what we're asking right now. All of all the beloveds on the earth plane is, is, is use it and step into your heart space. Listen, I love you, Eva, so much. I love you, Johnny. Thank you, you guys for having me. Please. Thank you amongst yourselves and um and uh blessings to everyone and all your relations yeah. Aloha. thank you so so we are still on air yes looking into to leave because she has a uh, 
a uh, session not? here. And yeah. we are going to put her contacts um, information in, in the uh, comment field here. But yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because I think the, I shouldn't say denial, but yeah, well, we addressed that. Uh, it's so easy for things to sneak in and the unintentional invites that we constantly give away um, against better knowing. So, you know, every time we're asking for things from a place that are not connected within, um, I should say, our uh, space of uh, from love and compassion you know that is an open invitation for another entity to energetically feed of it or just getting hooked up to you yeah <clears throat> one thing um like suki said about how did you get in here? And she mentioned, well, you drank gin the other night. Well, a lot of things I've learned over the years is things there, you have a protective sheath around you that is God given that we are all, all have. But when you do things like drinking and drugs, they put holes in your astral sheath and that allows entities to get in. And I'm sure there's other ways that they can get in um those are just the two that that uh, make make it easier for them to get in um mm -hmm. so i'm not saying everyone that has a drink and entity is going to climb right in but i'm just saying that over time like things that destroy your health puts holes in your astral sheath in your protection and people aren't aware that's why really severe alcoholics do see yeah. all these things and unseen entities is because they're being attacked all the time yeah. and, and they're very real it's a very real thing and so the more we're aware the more you can protect yourself like um at night, every night before I go to sleep, and this is aside from the protections I do, I do a healing with God. And first thing I do is ask Archangel Sandolphin to put his orange and silver light of protection around my aura while I connect with God through my aura. So I'm always protecting, no matter whether it's in the physical or the the spiritual realm because you have to right yeah. now while we're in this body we have to protect ourselves yeah i i like to think that um i i do love mantras and i, I do know that yeah. you have histories within the the culture of mantras uh, the buddhist buddhism yes yes, but, um, yes. i do love this at the karana you know, um, the mantra of I am the soul, I am the divine light, uh, etc. And that goes in three steps. There are three different parts of that. That's the mantra. And it activates and uh, your pillar of light, your connection to I am presence. And it also activates every every single center within your body, energy center within your body. So it do happen a lot of things when you do that mantra within yourself. Then you have this clearing. Um, yes. Yeah. Now you can see. And I, I, I did all Mana Padme. That. <laughs> He's showing his butt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did all Mana Padme hum, hum, um, mm. mantra when I was doing mine. And every, like Suki says, everything, you don't have to have one certain thing, you know. It, whatever works for you mm -hmm. there's yeah. many things many things that can protect you yeah just be aware that you do need protection um because until the battle of the minds is over till we're we're out of this 3d realm 
we'll get there with more ease if we use protection. So have you experienced some place or some, yeah, let's say place where you felt that you needed more protection? Because I guess that you can go places and you can be confronted with energies, but not all energies are necessary to, to clear away. Well, I remember the first time I had an experience with the entity was before my awakening, I was in my early 20s and I was in my parents' big room and there, uh, it was a split level home and it was over the garage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I woke up one night and there was a luminous green face staring at me with two black holes for eyes and a black hole for mouth. And it glowed like in the movie Ghostbusters, that little green thing that floated around it was it was like right above my face and i i always sleep on my stomach and i was laying on my back and i opened my eyes real calmly and i saw it and I, and i'm going okay i'm going to shut my eyes and i'll open them again it'll be gone and i opened my eyes and it was closer so i jumped out of my bed and got out my bible and my cross and kept the light on well years later i found out that a man hung himself in that room before mm. we, we bought that house and so that was his spirit hanging around and just to reiterate this story how unseen things can affect you everyone that had that room in my family had something tragic happen to them and it was my turn when I had that room and it was trying to come into me. And I believe if I would have welcomed it, it would have. These are all things I learned over the years. So, you know, I didn't know what it was. I knew it wasn't good. And the only thing I had to comfort me was my Bible and my cross. Um, and then years later, I, I learned about these things, you know, the unseen realm is right there with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and some are up to no good. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And and uh, unwanted energies that are not so good for you can actually set us a quite of um, repeated sequences of happenings uh, after you leave too so the energy can follow you and you can be in places where you are confronting those energies or are affected by those energies in many ways after you have um, so after you think you have removed them or stepped away from them so you you have to be conscious and, and know that when you are feeling that something isn't right within yourself or you're feeling the en energetic energy field change it probably has so it's good to be paying attention to how i feel and what it is that has entered my energy field and um, I, I know when i was little i used to be so afraid every night that something was going to come into my room and at night and I would lock my doors when I got older and I would have nightmares. I'd wake up hitting something or, you know, I was, and then I found out about wrap, asking Archangel Michael to wrap me in his protective blue cloak. As soon as I did that, I slept like a baby. So, you mm. know, I'm just saying it works. Oh yes, oh yes, it does. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, that people people do think that you actually have to believe uh, for it in order for it to work. And of course, if you are a believer, then you're in intensify intensify the feeling. But the beauty is that things are actually happening even if you do not believe in them. Exactly. So, and that could be both for the good good stuff and the bad stuff. So right. uh, 
you don't you don't have to be a believer for things to happen exactly <laughs> um that is good to know too <laughs> yes yes um, yeah do you have something you want to finish up with here or are we closing this bubble of uh I, I just want everyone to uh, know that everything is working out um, according to the divine plan. And just be aware that not only do we have our angelics um, on the heavenly realms here, we have our galactic family here. They know where each one of us are in our homes and our animals. And if anything happens, we're going to be okay, even your animals. So even your pets, um, I don't want anyone to be in fear. I want you all to go into your hearts and know that all is working out according to the divine plan and, and it's all going to be okay. Yeah. But I think that is going to have to be the, the closing of this gathering today. And uh, listening to what John and just said, everything is going to be okay. It, it it will always be okay in some sense, right? So thank you for tuning in here. And uh, yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, I love these conversations and, and uh, the topic was so relevant to what's going on today. So thank you all for listening here. And thank you, Johnny, for thank being you. here. Uh, thank you, Suki. Thank you, Suki, uh, dear. Yeah, thank you. And um, we thank will see you again with, with another topic. We'll, yeah, we will get back to that. Thank you. Bless your heart. Bless Bye -bye. your heart. So I'm just going to.